We're live, we're active, let's get it, man. Like I said, if it's your first time here, the subscribe button, your second time here, the like button. And if it's your third time here, drop that joint. Today, we're back with our original, oh my God, I forgot what I was gonna say. We're back to the regular show program. Whatever, bro, you know what I mean, okay? We're back with the Mr. Barley. If it's your first time here, you better get put on. If it's not, you already know we on. It's about to be interesting. It's about to be crazy. So let's get it. The most terrifying family you've added, you've never heard of, mature audiences only. You can't even see mature audiences, but that's probably what he said. That's probably what he, that's usually what he says. And let's get, oh, Today's wait, almost forgot. Almost forgot. Well almost forgot. So if y'all been noticing, I dropped, I've dropped like two, three videos that are not Mr. Ballin. Y'all like, where's Mr. Ballin? Eh? Like, where's Mr. Ballin? So that's what I'm going to do. I got... The, we got the joint that dropped today, which was Friday. Um, then I got one that dropped it Sunday. It's not going to be Mr. Ballin. But that Wednesday, so next week, when I start again, but I drop boom, Wednesday, it's going to be Mr. Ballin, and it's going to be a video I like watching. Then Friday, it's going to be a Mr. Ballin and a video I like watching. Then Sunday, I don't know if I'm doing Mr. Ballin and a video I like watching, but it's, probably, it's most, likely, most likely either going to be a video I like watching or Mr. Ballin. Either or, but I don't know if I'm a double upload because on Wednesday and Friday I'm a double upload Mr. Ballin and some I like watching. So y'all both, my returning audiences are still getting Mr. Ballin, and I can also do what I want at the same time. So yeah, hope y'all enjoy. Let's get it, man. Have you hope you're having a great day. Known cults and talking about this ritual that they admitted to performing. This episode is extremely graphic and very upsetting. So if you were to describe even it, even crazy, even getting crazy, getting into, crazy with the stories. If you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you come to the I right place. I feel like Mr. Ball. Like I watched his new stuff when I first got, got here. So I watched the old stuff. It was crazy. Got in the middle. middle it was like house, all right, a little bit less the glass like glass plate inside of their microwave. I don't want to be mean, but like that. Turn on all notifications. stuff. It was more like okay. Now he back to it. Today's story. At the end of the day, he got to have the stories behind the stories. They're not out there. They're not out there. The killing hour. God dang. The killing hour. In the early 1950s, Harold Alexander, who was a young stonemason living in Amber, Germany, came in contact with an old man named George Real. George was the leader of a small religious group called the Lorber Society. This group, which never had a large membership at any point in their short history, was rooted in the Christian faith, but their views were far more extreme than the average Christian congregation. For example, many Christians believe in the concept of self-denial, which in layman's terms means to deny oneself some personal human pleasures, like certain sexual practices or the overindulgence of food or drinking. And all of this is done to gain favor with God. But yeah, George yo, and the damn. other members of- Yo, some of y'all be yo gain for your religion. I just I can't even say. I, I mean, I guess I understand. Like, I'm not gaining that much from religion. Oh no, all, all this other stuff. You got me sliced, boy. Took this concept of self-denial to the extreme. They practiced it so aggressively and so literally that nobody in the society could really have a life of their own. All they could do to adhere to their society's very strict rules was to worship God 24/7. In addition to their very. Yo, you can. What would be, I gotta like search that up or something. Like what would a cult be? Like, do you call something like bad intent? Is that what it would be a cult? And nobody like, nobody would mess with you? I could be tripping. I don't know. I'm, like I said, I don't be paying up attention. I don't, I don't stay up to date with stuff like that. Be like, it's a cult. I'm like, I mean, are you doing anything bad? Okay then, what's the problem? Like, what's the problem? That's all this one joint. It was a, uh, it was a piece of land that was bought, uh, and they, I forgot who they were, what, or like what name or anything they were. But basically, they, they freely invited people to come. You can come, you can stay on land, and basically, it's, you're chilling there. All you gotta do is do your part. People were calling them car, all, I caught no way, this is just normal, y'all being forced to this, that, 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 that. Like, yo. Yo. People are more on religion. We wouldn't even say that's a cult. 
Y'all probably like, yo, you tripping. But let me put it this way. To go to church. How many of y'all have been like, I don't want to go to church. Or say, I don't want to go today. I don't want to go today. And you get beat. Or you get in trouble. Or something happens to you. Or you go to church. You go to sleep. You get beat. You, you do. I'm not going to say too much, but that's not call to call. Right, even though you're forcing it with somebody as a little child. I'm not going to say too much, but. Yeah. Um, you can say it's a call, but nobody's going to say that. They're going to be like, oh, no, because it's good intent. Da, 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 da. I mean, I guess you know what's best for your child because you're beating him because you didn't want to go to church. I guess. Check to see your lifestyles, members of the Lorber Society also believed that anybody outside of their small society was basically evil. So, Harold... What's that sound like? 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 That's basically like religion's beefing. Oh, you're, no, your religion's wrong because this happened. Oh, your religion's wrong because that, that. Oh, no, we don't mess with y'all. That's basically how people, people that are serious into religion, they will not mess with another religion. I know some people like, I know some people like, I know some people like that, but yeah. For the most part, for y'all people that are really into religion and will beef with the other side, it's not that it's serious. George. It's not that serious. It's not that serious. You ain't even seen God, boy. You ain't even seen him. You ain't never seen this boy in a day in your life. You've only seen Jesus. You ain't even seen Jesus. You've seen what the pictures that they have of Jesus, boy. You don't even know if that's a real picture, boy. Unclear exactly how he meets George, but he does, and immediately- They ain't, they ain't even have cameras back then. You going off word of mouth. You think somebody's gonna be perfectly, be able to perfectly describe what you look like a thousand years from now. Not, not saying this only is, oh, it's, it's only been a thousand. It's been more than a thousand years, boy. Harold is blown. Get out of here, George. man. He thinks he's totally incredible. He's so charismatic. And apparently, George felt equally highly about Harold. And so right away, they have this friendship. They strike up. And Harold and his wife, Dragma, they end up joining the Lorber Society. And they completely give themselves over to this very intense lifestyle. And they listen to everything George tells them to do. And then very quickly, after Harold and his wife had joined this society, their leader, George, became very ill. And it became clear he was going to die soon. When George was on his deathbed, Harold went to visit him. And after speaking with him privately in this room, Harold emerges and he tells his wife that George has told him that he is is going to be the next leader of the Lorber Society once George passes away. And so his wife accepts this, as does the rest of the society members. And then after George actually does die, everyone in the society just turns towards Harold and begins listening to him and following him. Die, it's worth die. noting that we don't know for sure if George really did tell Harold that he was going to be the next leader of the Lorber Society, or if Harold just made that up because he knew George was going to die soon and he could kind of get away with stealing that title. Over the next few years that Harold was in charge of the Lorber Society, he began introducing a new concept to the members. He would continuously tell them that they needed to be ready for when the next prophet of God returned to the earth. Harold told his members that when this happened, one, Harold would know immediately that he would be tell blowing them, me. and two, whatever this prophet- That right there, that prophet be blowing me, boy. Be blowing me. He blowing me, bro. I like. I want some hardcore proof. I want to see the young boy in my face. Bow, 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 bow. Cause if the story came out, I saw God. Maybe there's a story out there. Oh, I seen Jesus. Shut up. Just shut up. Shut up. You don't only want to see him. You don't only want us. How? 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 Oh, you died and came back to life. You sure? You sure? You sure? I ain't never, I ain't, I have never, I have never, unless I'm tripping, have y'all ever seen somebody die and come back to life? I mean, actually, you're dead. You can't be dead and come back to life, then you're not dead. That means you still got something and that can bring you back. I was watching the young boy DJ Ghost last night. He said it. He said it. Just because you flatline, don't mean you dead. 
just mean you, your body stopped working for a little bit. Stopped working to the extent of us being able to notice. The only way I'm believe if somebody died and saw God or Jesus or anybody die for like a whole week and come back. Come, bet you won't. Bet you won't come back after a week. I bet you won't. You know why? Because you really going to be dead, boy. Wanted. Ain't nobody dying. Coming back. Not that long after this. I'm back. I've seen everything. Or crazy or terrible. They had to do it without question because this was God's will. In 1953, so roughly a year or two after Harold has taken over the Lorber Society, he and his wife, Dragma, have their second child. It's their first boy, and they name him Frank. And as soon as this child is born, Harold looks at him and Look determines that this boy, his son, is the prophet they have all been waiting for. He is the so prophet. So he tells his wife, and he tells the members of the I don't know how you find how do you find out? His son, Frank, is the prophet of God, and everyone across the board completely accepts it. As the prophet, Frank, grew up, he was shamelessly worshipped and waited on 24-7 by the members of the Lorber Society and his own family. And so naturally, this had just a profound oh my God, he, on the he way Frank it? and how he behaved. I feel like he's faking Frank his joint just to get that grade school children. He get fully that treatment. believed that he was the prophet of God, and he began using that authority to kind of boss his family around more than he really needed to, especially his three sisters and his mother. But no Man, one that boy authority he never even again. had. This is the prophet of God, and he can do whatever he wants. When Frank turned 16, he started thinking about girls and sex, but he was conflicted because he had been taught everybody outside of this society he was a part of. Oh my God, but he gonna be the prophet. Loot himself. Can we have prophet? Sex with these evil women. And so he went to his father and told him that he wants to start having sex with his mother and his sisters in order to stay. Yo, no way, no way, no way. His dad said, all right. Then the sister said, all right. Or the mom said, all right. No way, boy. No way, just because they believe this fake ass Not prophet only stuff. the idea, he encouraged it. And in fact, he would often join in with his son See, during the sexual Yo! As Yo! Well Yo! Yo! You joined in on a sexual joint 15, 15, 18? Mother, bro, no freaking way. No freaking way. He was fucking his 15-year-old fucking daughter and he was fucking his 15-year-old sister. And no way the family was getting in, bro. It's no way. It is no way you were in that... You're into that religion that much. There's no way. There's no way. This is why this, this is what we're talking about. Y'all bugging people. I really take me a culture oh, serious. Woman, they completely accepted their new roles as I, I understand taking your culture. Because they believe what I'm doing. I'm not your culture religion. My bad. Religion. Religion. And if you don't say my religion is my culture, I mean, if, you're, if your religion is fucking your fucking sisters, <laughs> you got that one, boy. I don't want to be a part Whatever of it. Whatever Frank the prophet wanted, they were serving God. Eventually, one of the sisters began talking to some of her very few friends at school about how she was kind of jealous of her other sisters for all the attention they were getting from Frank. And so the friends kind of picked up on this strange relationship between the siblings. And before long, rumors had started about there being some incestuous relations inside of this family. And those rumors eventually made their way to the parents of students. And then from the parents, that made its way to the police. And before long, Harold had discovered that the Hamburg police were about to launch an investigation. They better run up with you, dummy. Family. And at the yeah. same time, Harold also yeah. discovered that members of the Lorber Society, they had heard about these incest rumors. Yeah. Their own suspicions already. Yeah, boy, you done for. Incest. And so they were very clearly starting to you distance here, you themselves try to use from your Harold power, and his family. Here and so it was pretty that clear was, to Harold stupid. that the writing was on the wall. Stupid and wild. his family were no longer welcome in Hamburg. And so he goes to the Lorber Society and kind of retires and says, you know, I'm leaving. You need to find yourself a new leader of this society. And then he and his family come to use that power with the Lorber That's Society. Why. He finally, he finally caught up to him. South to Santa Cruz, which is a city on the Canary Islands in Spain. And so they set up a little apartment inside of this busy city. And very quickly, they fell back into their old routines. How? Constantly worshiping Frank. The prophet of God. Oh, you already know uh, he's not. No longer affiliated with the Lorber Society, and so their actions were now being driven by their own personal belief system. Ten 
months later, Yo, on December 22nd, they are bugging. They continue to do this. Named Walter Trankler was at his villa, which was located not far from where the Alexanders lived, when he heard a knock at his front door. When he opened the front door, he saw there were these two men who he didn't recognize, who were covered head to toe in what looked like mud. And at first, he was totally taken aback by their appearance and almost wanted to just shut the door. But in order to be polite, he kept the door slightly open and said, you know, hey, how can I help you guys? And the two men would introduce themselves as Harold and Frank Alexander, and they were there to speak with one of their family members, Sabine. Sabine was one of Frank's two younger sisters, and she worked for the doctor as a housemaid. And so the doctor, he didn't know any of Sabine's family members, so he just kind of took their request at face value and said, hold on, let me go get her. And so he leaves the front door, he goes into the kitchen, and he finds Sabine, this 15-year-old girl, and he tells her that your father and your brother are waiting for you outside, they want to talk to you. And so Sabine, without saying a word, puts her knife and the food down, she walks out of the kitchen with the doctor, and as they're walking towards the front door, the doctor stops about 10 or 15 feet away from the front door to kind of allow Sabine to walk up and have a semi-private conversation with her relatives, although they're still inside of his house, so he didn't want to go too far. And so the doctor is standing maybe 15 feet away, wondering if he should just turn around or maybe just go into the other room to let them speak, when he overhears the father, Harold, say something truly horrific to his daughter. It was so shocking that the doctor stopped what he was doing, turned, and looked directly at Sabine to see how she was going to react to what she just heard. But to the doctor's absolute shock, Sabine didn't break down and start crying or start screaming out in pain. Her mom, in anguish. Instead, they killed her mother. And grabbed her father's muddy hand and pressed it to her cheek and said, I'm sure you did what was necessary. And then the two embraced. They killed the somebody, it had you both. Totally shocked, staring it's the mother, at these it's one of the sisters, the, the other doing. sister, Why are they three here? people, what are they that's talking about? Is people, this really happening? we got three in front of us. Blurts out, hey, I'll be right back, stay right there. And then the doctor oh, turned around and darted out of the front hall into another room where he barricaded himself inside. Yeah, and then so he called the sisters. police. When the police showed up just a few minutes later, they rolled into the front lot and they saw Harold, Frank, and Sabine were still just casually standing in the front doorway of the doctor's villa, seemingly not really trying to go anywhere or do anything. And so the police get out of their car, they walk up to the trio and they say, you know, what's going on? What are you doing here? And Harold very calmly and casually tells one of the officers the same horrible thing that the doctor overheard him saying to Sabine. Except this time, Harold specified to the officers where this horrible thing took place. What he said it happened inside man. of their apartment. The police were well, shocked yeah, at Harold's candidness and the fact that his two kids were standing right next to him and they're hearing what their father is saying. They too are just totally detached and very calm as if nothing their father is saying is having any effect on them. It's just totally business as usual. And so the police asked Harold to repeat the story a few times to make sure they were hearing him correctly. And then they just arrested Harold and his two kids. After the three Alexanders were brought to the police station, three other police officers were sent over to the Alexander's apartment in Santa Cruz to see if what Harold had said was actually true. And when these officers opened the front door to that apartment, they immediately could tell it was all true. The following is the story of what happened inside of that apartment based on the testimony given by Frank and Harold. On December 21st, 1970, so that's one day before Frank and Harold arrived on the doorstep of the doctor's villa, the father and son were home in their apartment with the mother, Dragma, as well as two of the three sisters. It was 18-year-old Marina and 15-year-old Petra. The other sister, Sabine, she was over at the doctor's villa. She was staying with him for a couple of days while she worked there. At some point that afternoon, Dragma and Harold left the living room and went into one of the bedrooms to lie down and take a nap. And after they lie down, Frank, for some reason, gets up from the living room and walks into the bedroom and sits down on the edge of the bed and just stares down at his mother. And when his mother rolls over and looks up at her son, Frank would later tell police that the look she gave him was suggestive and it was offensive to Frank and he believed she was not permitted to look at him that way. Oh my gosh, so see bro, this, this prophet shit. Him, he said he instinctively knew that the killing hour was upon them. The killing the hour killing was hour? a Lorber society concept. It was something that Frank and most likely Harold had come up with and the rest of the family, the mother and the three sisters, had totally accepted. According to Frank and Harold, Y'all accepted them just having a killing hour and just going around 
killing people. That's 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 what I'm hearing. That's what I'm hearing. This see what happens if you can you do you, this is happening because this it, oh my god this is happening because they thought told this boy he was a prophet from a young boy giving him all this power actually thinking he he doing something women were he ain't nothing he's just regular person like everybody else to purify them i.e send them to heaven and not hell was to murder them and so it was just fundamentally understood in the alexander household that at some point frank was going to declare that the killing hour was upon them and when that happened all the women in the household were told to stop what they were doing and wait for frank to sacrifice them meaning wait Yo. for frank to ritualistically kill them so after frank has Yo, it's this never that serious religion it's face, not he now feels like the killing hour is upon them and so he literally announces it to his mother he's to his killing mom, hour and right next to her and then frank grabs a nearby wooden coat hanger and strikes his mother on the top of her head now his mother, she's Bruh. heard that the killing hour that is on hers. them. Like what happened? He's what? starting to beat her, and so what does she do? She follows the rules. She flips herself over onto her stomach, puts her hands down by her side, and lays flat and still, so Frank can more easily kill her. And so Frank begins Yo, what the, the back fuck? of his mother's head with this wooden coat hanger, while his father Harold excitedly leaps out of the bed, doesn't try to stop what's going on. He runs into the living room and he begins very enthusiastically playing the organ an organ is like a piano that's played a lot of times inside of christian churches and so with all this commotion going on in the house the other two sisters that were there marina and petra they come out of their bedrooms into the living room they see their father playing the organ and they look into the bedroom where they hear all this noise and it's frank murdering their mother and they're looking at this happening they're not doing anything they're just staring at it and then their father says to them the killing hour is upon us. You need to get ready. And so the girls, when they hear this, they know the rules. And so they stop watching this attack and they make their way over to the center of the living room and they sit down cross-legged and they begin to patiently wait their turn. After a while, Frank stopped Yo, beating his mother who was now unconscious or perhaps even dead. And he walked out of the bedroom into the living room where he saw his father on the organ and he saw his two sisters sitting on the ground. And so without any hesitation, he walks over to Marina, the older one, the 18 year old, and he begins hitting her on the top of the head until she slouches over onto the ground motionless. And then he turns to the younger one, Petra, the 15 year old, and he does the same thing to her. Bro, until she's brutal. He, with a freaking hanger, bro. Up, you know how much you gotta be, bro, you know much you gotta be somebody with a hanger? And y'all just was sitting there letting that happen. Y'all was okay with that? Bro, y'all was like, I don't even like, Y'all was up here really like that much into it. But they was like, it's the, the parents grew them up like that. That's wild, bro. That's wild. I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say, bro. In the kitchen where he retrieves a small knife, pruning shears, and a hammer. At this point, it's likely that one or two of the Alexander women were still alive. And so Frank, he comes back into the living room with these tools in hand and with the organs blaring in the background, he begins to systematically hack off the breasts and genitals of his two sisters and his mother. And apparently this was a very slow and physically difficult task. And so he and his father, Harold, began switching off. One person would be on the Yo, organs, one the other was like, mutilating. This is thing you would think like it's a movie, like it's a killer movie, until bro. all of the offending parts on these three women had been removed and nailed to the wall. The last mutilation this father and son committed was to cut the heart out of the mother, Dragma, and they wrapped it up in a cord and then nailed this cord to the wall as well. Then, Yo, with the, the three fuck? Alexander women either dead or close to death, the father and son began running around the apartment yelling and singing and rejoicing. They were extremely proud of what they had just done. Later that night, they left the apartment Yo, the women, in another they, property. They didn't freaking home. die like... And the following day, December 22nd... Yo, she told me they said they were suffering? ...to tell Sabine the good news. So they knock on the door. The doctor answers. He goes back. He gets Sabine. Sabine walks up, and Harold. Her I couldn't even imagine, her, bro, getting Sabine, beaten in the head. Sabine, we wanted to tell you right away. Cut that vagina. That Frank and, and I have just though. finished killing your mother and your sisters. To which Sabine walks up to him, takes her father's hand, presses it to her cheek, and says, "I'm sure you did what was necessary." This, of course, is what the doctor saw and overheard that was so horrible, and prompted him to call the police. It was also the moment when he realized 
that was not mud all over these two men. That was their family members' blood. Psychiatrists would ultimately determine that Frank Yo, and they Harold was were not mentally fit and for blood. Trial. And so they were both committed to an asylum for the criminally insane. Look at him, both he looked crazy, never bro. showed any remorse or regret about what they had done. In fact, they continued Cause they was to that much justify into, bro, they was that much into it. They was like, the, them, the children, I want to say brainwashed. Children like brainwashed because the, the parents, they was only going to follow the parents. Sabine, she pleaded with authorities to let her go live with her brother and her father in this asylum, but they rejected this request. Ah, and dang, what are you that much into convent, it? Which is a building that nuns live in, and no one really knows what happened to her after that. Shockingly, in 1990, so roughly 20 years after Frank and Harold were put into this asylum, look they managed to escape, and that they were never caught. Crazy. To this day, their whereabouts remain unknown. You so tell You tell me! And sent her to live in a convent. How? Which how do how do people in mental institutions no really escape? I don't understand, yeah. bro. In 1990, so roughly 20 years after Frank and Harold were put into this asylum, they managed to escape, and they were never caught. To I never even I never even heard about this, bro. Where are the pictures at? They ever got no pictures out after what they did? They got something out of they really be, they really think already. they really this think this is like real. They like how do we know this is not happening right now? Like we wouldn't even know. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications Man, so you don't the... miss any of our weekly too. I'm pausing that, bro. As you can see, I said in the video, this drone was crazy. I did not expect it to be like that. Like, I'm trying to really think of what I should drive anything to say. It's not that deep. The religion is not that deep. It's not that deep, bro. You don't, you don't got actual proof? It's not that deep. If I walked up to you and said, I can walk on water and walked away, would you believe me? Would you believe me? I don't think so. I don't think so. Just think about that for a second. You need proof. Maybe I'm bugging. How do you know the proof real? Government be doing some shady stuff. I'm going to keep it right there. But yeah, if y'all enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button. If you didn't like the video, hit the like button and tell me why. Other than that, drop that joint. And we out, y'all. Deuces.